Hi everyone, Molten here and welcome back to my journey to GM series. So shortly after I got my IM title, I was actually very content with where I was at and I never really had any ambition to go any further than that until I played this tournament which was the Sydney International in 2014 where I sort of accidentally won and got my first Grandmaster Norm and from then on I sort of had to get the next two because of my habit of collecting and basically not wanting to leave anything unfinished so for good or for bad um, it led me on to that path now the reason i want to show you this particular game from the tournament is because when i was preparing for this game my opponent i knew was a straight up collie system player he only played the collie system and for those of you who want to know what is a good system to play or what response to play against uh, such a player who's really only uh, going to uh, do the same thing and not really deviate then this is what I would recommend now myself I have a different um, set of repertoire really based around e6 but for this particular game I decided to play the move point to g6 because I knew my opponent would always play e3 and b3 and bishop d3 so on so the game continued bishop to g7 bishop d3 castles castles and immediately I put pressure with the move pawn to c5. Now this system is all about trying to make your opponent feel a bit uncomfortable with their typical setup because we're going to assume that they're going to play the exact same moves and they're not going to really deviate. Of course they can deviate and play other moves such as takes, of course we can play queen a5, recapture the pawn back and black is totally fine of course but I figured that he's going to play the move pawn to b3, which is what happened in the game, after which the intention was to take the pawn, and after pawn takes, play this relatively simple looking move, but it comes with a lot of sting later on, and that is pawn to d5, just taking up a little bit of space. Here my opponent played the move rook to e1, could also continue with the move bishop to b2, and we lead into uh, similar sort of position. Here I played the move knight to c6, a3. So already white has to look at stopping moves such as knight b4 followed by bishop to f5. And here I played the move bishop to g4. And we see that white is in a little bit of trouble because he can't really develop his pieces as naturally as he would like. Would like to play bishop b2, knight d2, but it's just not possible to get the moves in in time. For example, bishop b2 is met by bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, and then queen b6, and already white is in a whole lot of trouble because there's no way to really defend this d4 pawn easily. Therefore, white had to play the move pawn to c3, um, not a move that he wants to play. Rook to e8, looking to capitalize with a break in the center. Bishop went back to e2. Now, white is... Yeah, going going backwards a bit here, just trying to develop the rest of his pieces. Knight e4, making sure that this knight is unable to develop, tied down to the c pawn. Knight d2, we traded, we got a bunch more trades here, and then we broke open the center with the move pawn to e5. We see uh, white's pieces are still stuck on the queen side. If captures, rook takes followed by queen e7 is very, very strong for black. Therefore, bishop b2 was played. Now, played the move queen to b6, eyeing this pawn, setting up some possible threats of capturing here many, many times, and then some rook e1 checkmate threat at the end is coming. Pawn takes, rook takes an e5, c4, d4 here if white captures we capture back rook takes queen takes and again we get this back rank so rook d3 is played rook goes across to e8 we can see that our white is completely um, passive now and black has a clear advantage and initiative as well so rook e2 rook b1 queen a5 so now the queen wants to swing across to the f5 square. b4, queen f5, 
knight f3. Here I wanted to play the move knight to e5 in order to hit the rook, hit the knight, which can't actually capture because queen takes f2 would lead to mate. However, my rook is undefended if I play knight e5 right away. So I decided to go for the move rook to e4 first. So now this way my rook is defended. And after the rook drops back, I played the move knight to e5 here. So defending the rook here with tactics. So if rook takes, I can play rook takes. And if queen takes, there's some queen takes b1 threat at the end, which white needs to look out for. So white played the move king f1. And here I was extremely tempted to play this move knight to e takes f3. And at first I thought this was working and, and it might actually still be working. I'm not exactly sure why I, I didn't play this move, but this would have been very strong perhaps because queen takes runs into queen takes b1 and take here. I believe there's queen takes f3. It's a very strong move because queen takes and there's a nice mating pattern here on h1. And if king takes, I believe there's some check followed by takes and check here. So maybe this was winning and uh, this was something I did consider, but, but for some reason I rejected it in the game. So knight takes f3 might have been a much better move. Instead I played pawn to d3, bishop takes, bishop takes, rook here and I did see the following move here which is winning for black and I, I saw it was relatively safe but I definitely should have gone for the knight takes f3 one um, assuming that was working would have been much cleaner but bishop d4 here if knight takes we have checkmate of course so queen takes rook takes and the king can't go to g1 because rook takes f3 opens up a nice discovered check and then checkmate to follow. So king e1, queen e6, and here I just dropped the bishop back to f6. And so I was just saying the rook is on a very good square, the king is very weak. So black has a huge advantage here, but of course the game continues on for a little while longer. a4, and we capture the pawn on the king side. Now black is a lot of material up. This pin is also very annoying now for white. And eventually we invade on the queen side. Queen c3, the rook's coming on to the a1 square, so white resigned here. So this was just a short video just to show you what I would play if my opponent was a pure collie player. And it might help a few of um, you guys out who had questions of what to do uh, when faced with this system. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll cover a few more games from the following tournament in uh, the coming ones. Catch you later. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.